Hello! So recently the company Besame Cosmetics sent me a PR package of a bunch of goodies. If you're in the vintage community, I'm sure that you've probably heard of them. I did a video reviewing one of their lipsticks, which did not go too well. <laughs> I've had a few requests for a review of the goodies that I got. It'd be a good second chance for me to use some of their products, and I'm actually gonna follow the instructions this time. I know, it's shocking. Are you super lopsided? Huh. Know why they call them bumper bangs? Now, as awesome as it is that they sent me a PR package, which basically means that they send you a bunch of products for free and they don't necessarily ask for anything in return, but you know they're kind of expecting social media posts or videos or reviews, something like that. Yes, it's sweet, but it's also free advertising for them. I am honored and flattered that they sent me free stuff, but that does not change the opinions that I'm gonna have on their makeup, so. In their box of goodies, tell me that's not just super aesthetic. The one thing I know for sure about Besame is that their packaging and marketing and design is They sent me their 1940 fragrance, their Besame Brightening Vanilla Rose Powder, their Cream Mascara, their Cream Rouge. Looks like a lip brush and an eyebrow brush, and then a fancy little brush, which I don't really know what it does, but it's a thing that they sent me. And then they sent me four lipstick colors. So they sent me Dusty Rose, Noir Red, American Beauty, and Red Velvet. So I guess the best way to do this is to show you the different shades that I got and then leave one of them on during the day and I can check in maybe later and tell you how, how, how it goes. No, how is it, how goes it? That's what I was, it, ding, ding, ding. Okay, so if you watched my last Besame lipstick review, I did not follow the instructions. I did not even know that it came with instructions. Also, I want to preface this by saying I am a thousand percent a liquid lipstick gal. This is my ride or die lipstick. This sh does not come off. I just want to give you that little background. I know some people don't like liquid lipsticks and they prefer cream. So if I am a little biased, I'm sorry, but the transfer of lipstick on my teeth, on my food, on my face, on my fingers drives me up the wall. So just keep that in mind when I'm giving this review because you might be different, you might not mind transfer as much. And I just want to be clear that yes, this is a review, but these are my own personal opinions. I know that there are a lot of diehard Besame lovers out there and of course you're allowed to disagree, you're allowed to say that you love it. Everyone has different tastes in makeup. Makeup works differently on everyone, so just go easy on so I think the shade that I want to keep on for the rest of the day is American Beauty. So I will save that for last. Now I'll just pull out the instructions real quick so I can make sure that I actually did it right. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say it. I am a very low maintenance person when it comes to lipsticks. I like to just put it on my lips and go. These lipsticks are kind of meant to be time capsules, I think. They are modeled after actual shades from the year that it specifies, and I'm assuming that's why the application is a little intense, because that's how it used to be. So I'm going to start out with Red Velvet. Prepare lips. <laughs> Number one, prepare lips. Ensure your lips are clean and free of dryness. Hydrate lips with a small amount of your favorite balm and let set for a minute. I don't use lip balm. My lips aren't too dry right now, so I'm just gonna skip that step. Blot excess balm and apply a touch of foundation to the edges of your lips. Fuck. Oh, gotta go get my foundation. This will lock in the lipstick's color and extend its wear. Draw in the natural edge of your lips with the Besame lipsticks. Tip sharp, what? Tip sharp point. 
the Besame lipsticks with the Besame lipstick lipsticks tip sharp point. This will keep the lipstick from bleeding out of the edges of the lip line. Do not overdraw your lips since this may create an artificial look. Bitch, what if I want to create an artificial look? So judging by the comments on my last video, I've heard that a lip liner can definitely help. For the first time in my life, I bought a lip liner. So we're gonna try that. But remember not to overdraw your lips because you wouldn't want to create an artificial look, am I right? I'm gonna stop being salty. <laughs> Okay, Princess Amajala. Okay. So using the flat side of your Besame lipstick, start at the highest point of the lips directly under the nostrils. Fill in with color, working towards the center of your lips on one side, then from the center out to the other corner. Apply one coat of color, filling in the top and bottom of your lips. If you go outside the lip line, use your finger or a cotton swab to correct it, and then blend the area with a bit of your foundation. Press your lips together lightly to distribute the color. For a stronger finish, apply a final coat in the center of the lip. This makes me so nervous. Why is it so hard? Also, why is it like five sentences just to tell you to put lipstick on your lips? That is lopsided. Apply a final coat to the, in the center of the lip. Let me see if I got this right. Use a tissue to gently blot the lips to seal in the color. Blot twice. Add one final coat with one more blot to finish. Okay. I've also heard in the comments that putting a thin piece of tissue and then putting powder over that will also help. This color right here is just to show you what it actually looks like. I'll see if I have the energy to do that for the last one. <laughs> so this is the color Red Velvet. It is definitely really beautiful. The process is a bit more complicated than I'm used to, but you can't deny that their colors are very beautiful. It does feel very moisturizing, and it doesn't feel like it's going to dry out my lips like some liquid lipsticks do, which is good, because I know that's, that's a big reason why people like cream versus liquid. Now I'm going to save the transfer test for the last lipstick that I'll be wearing, so I'll do a quick one. <laughs> Next I'm going to do the Dusty Rose, which is a nude color, and I've seen it on the interwebs, and it's quite a beautiful color, so I'm pretty excited to try it. Oh, this is darker than I thought. Oh no. Oh. Eh. Just a note, cat hair and cream lipsticks do not mix. I'm not gonna lie, I, I'm not a huge fan of this color. It's a little darker than I thought it was gonna be. And I don't know if it's just the way I applied it, but it just looks kind of streaky. Still a very, very pretty color, but not on me. <laughs> and the next color that I'm going to use is Noir Red, a very vampy color, which is cool. I would imagine that this could get a little streaky if not done correctly, so we're gonna see about that. <laughs> oh, I'm scared. Ho, 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 ho. Uh oh Wow! I look like I just got into the chocolate. This is a stunning color. I am feeling this. It does look a bit weird when I talk. That has nothing to do with Besame. That's pretty much what happens whenever I use any dark, really dark lipstick, so. I think I would be a bit worried that it would get on my tooth. Oh no. I'm just gonna do a quick transfer test, don't mind me. I'm just gonna make out with my hand for just a little bit. 
Oops. Oh, shit. I uh, w uh, mm, just wanted to <laughs> do a little experimenting to see what it would look like when it starts to fade. It's not as bad as I thought, actually. For how dark it is, the way that it fades is not jarring. It's gonna take 10 minutes to wipe this all off my, my whole body. <laughs> 2,000 years later. So this shade is American Beauty, and this will be the one that I'm keeping on all day. So I feel like the thing about cream lipsticks is that you can't get as much precision. And yes, I know I'm not using any sort of lip brush, but even if I did use a lip brush, I have a feeling you're not really supposed to go outside the lines with these lipsticks. And I have the world's most crooked lips to begin with. <laughs> so not being able to correct that like I do with liquid lipstick kind of makes me feel a little bummed out. So if you're part of the Crooked Lips Club, which kind of sounds like the best band name ever, I'll do a quick transfer test. Although you've seen with the other lipsticks, it's probably gonna be the same. And I know people in the comments are gonna say the transfer isn't the point with cream lipsticks, and I know. I'm aware that liquid lipsticks and cream lipsticks are two completely different beasts, but when you're used to not having any transfer at all, this can be quite an adjustment. And I've heard from a lot of people that Bessemé lipsticks last all day for them, and they're amazed by how long they last, so we're gonna give it a try. So I'll give you my final thoughts on that towards the end. Now let's move on to the next item. And now because my eyes are naked, we're gonna try their cream mascara. Which again, the packaging. Hey, how are ya? Oh, okay, so it comes in this little tube and a brush. I'm scared. Aside from having the world's most crooked lips, I also have the world's most oily eyelids. That's why I don't use most mascaras, because they always come off around here. I'm a bit nervous about this. I am wearing Urban Decay Primer Potion on my lids, so it shouldn't be as bad as it would be if I was just going... I can't remember the words for when you don't wear underwear. Captain? Hey Google, what is it called when you don't wear underwear? If you don't wear underwear, it's called going commando. Thank you! Going commando with my eyelids. Instruction time because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. To use, squeeze desired amount onto clean brush, apply to lashes in thin layers. That's easy enough. <laughs> oh god. Get it all up in there. Okay, here we go. Mascara face is also another good name for a band. So it definitely did the job. And it did a better job of length and volume than I thought it was going to, so that's good. Without talking about the quality, again, I know these are reproduction items and they're supposed to give you that old-timey feel, but for me, if you're gonna be spending that much money on this versus something from the store that could do the same exact thing, it's gotta have something instead of just pulling it out of the tube, putting it on, putting it back, and leaving the house. Now I have this goopy stick, which I pretty much have to wash off right now, otherwise I don't have anywhere to put it. And just the fact that I have to apply that goop every time. So I'm not gonna wash this off right now, because ain't nobody got time for that. So I'm just gonna put it over there. Next up, we will do the Cream Rouge. Like I said, you cannot beat Besame's packaging. This is the shade Apricot. So the cool thing about this is that it's for the cheeks and the lips. So if you're not feeling like putting on a bunch of lipstick, you can just dab some of this on your lips. Like they would have. How do I open you? Okay. Do you have instructions? I'm assuming that you just kind of... Ooh. Smells good. I look ridiculous. So I'm gonna blend this out with my blush. So I might have put a little bit too much on. 
but it's a little hard to tell how much you're putting on. I guess I could just do direct, but I didn't, so it's a pretty color. I mean, again, it's not extraordinary. It's nothing that you couldn't get for $5 at the drugstore. So you are definitely paying for the aesthetics and actually I wouldn't mind buying this one. How much does this fetch you for? Nah, just kidding. So this is $18. I am a cheapo cheapskate. Again, if I'm gonna pay $18 for a blush, it has gotta be something that I've never experienced before and it's gotta blow me away. So I would say half of the price of this is probably just the packaging. And that may sound salty, but $18 for some blush. I... It is really pretty though. Next up is the Brightening Vanilla Rose Powder. That packaging though. Get ready to be admired. Oh you, I will. Super aesthetic. <laughs> Apply evenly with powder puff or brush. Remove excess powder for a natural shine-free complexion. Oh, that's so cute. And I should have done this before in the blush, but you know, it's pink. So I actually don't wear powder, but I find that it dries out my face a little bit. I'm gonna try it. Whoa, here we go. Are you ready to be admired? I don't think you are. On your do -do -do. I want to hear, want to hear, want to hear the more. Again, we'll see how this wears throughout the day, but I actually really like it. Anyone else's bumper bangs just look absolutely ridiculous in a camera? I like it. I feel like it just gives a very doughy appearance. How would I describe that? Mmm, I don't know. It gives me a very noir feel. But then again, I don't use powder that often, so I can't really tell you if it's different from anything else that I've used. So this is $22. Would I spend that much? Probably not. I've heard for, from a few people that their powders are drying. I didn't put on that much, so I don't know if I'll be able to attest to that, but we'll see. And last but not least in this expedition, the perfume. So this is their 1940 perfume, which again, aesthetic. And once you open it up, you get this really beautiful product. Although I will say my friend Christine has this one and she said after being in your purse for a little while the gold foil just comes off and it's just a vial. So keep that in mind. I don't use this that often and when I do it's just on my nightstand and I put it on in the morning and then leave. It's a bit weird to review perfume because obviously I can't describe the scent to you. But I will say as far as perfumes, I am a very foodie person, which I know some people aren't. Everybody has their different scents that they like, but the more I smell like food, the better. <laughs> so a lot of my perfumes are vanilla based or cotton candy or something like that. I will say that this is definitely something different for me, but I love it. It smells very sensual. I feel like a grown ass woman when I wear this perfume, as opposed to a child in a bakery shop. I'm not a huge fan of roll on perfumes, cause I feel like you don't get that much out and it just seems, eh, eh. it just seems like you're not covering the area as quickly and as efficiently as you could a spray, but that's just me. So I don't know how long grown-up perfumes usually last. <laughs> I kind of regretted not bringing this to work with me because even an hour in, I don't, I couldn't really smell it anymore. Once in a while I would get tiny whiffs and if, you know, you put your nose directly up against your skin, you could smell it. And it's hard to tell because sometimes you just get used to scents. And also might be why it's so travel-sized so that you can just apply every now and then. And the price is... $25, which doesn't surprise me. This, I think I can actually justify that price because I think a lot of perfumes are around that range and this seems like it would last you a long time and it smells really, really good. But it's just weird to think that I'm holding $25 in my hands. It's kind of a weird thing where yes, I think it, it is definitely worth $25, but would I spend that $25? I don't know. <laughs> so that is everything that they sent me. I wanted to make sure I did at least a thorough job. I will check in later with how everything is holding up, including the lipstick. We'll see how the lipstick holds up after lunch and all that good stuff. <laughs> 
I will bring it with me to reapply, but I will let you know what it looks like before I reapply. It is 12.51 right now, I will check in later. But before I check in with that, I just want to give my final thoughts because it's probably gonna be dark when I come back. Besame, you confusing beast. I feel like it's probably not secret that a lot of the price that you're paying goes to how beautiful everything is. Even though I'm not a huge fan of their lipsticks, just having these on my vanity just kind of gives that antique vibe. But I will also say aesthetics aren't everything when it comes to price. And again, this is just my own personal preference. It's also a fact that you're paying for the history and kind of reliving those eras, which I totally understand and I can respect. And I think what they're doing is really cool, but some things have become more convenient for a reason. <laughs> I think if you are going to spend 20 to $25 on a lipstick, for me, it's got to be more than just really pretty. It's got to be revolutionary. This lipstick is 6 or $7. It allows me just to put it on and then not worry about it all day, which is something that's really important to me. Today, I have a feeling I'm going to be very concerned with what my face looks like. I'm definitely going to be nervous and asking Nick every five minutes if my lipstick is smudged. And the fact that I can't even kiss him without making his face look like a Jackson Pollock painting. Some people like leaving the smooch mark on their significant others, but I do not, and he does not. <laughs> so, But yes, I just wanted to give my honest opinion. For me, I don't know that I would spend that much money on any of this stuff, except for maybe the perfume. But again, I am Cheapscape McGee. I am in no means telling anyone that they shouldn't try it out or anything. I have nothing against Besame. I just... For me, I am very much into modern conveniences and I don't have 10 minutes to put on my lipstick. And then worry about it all day, so... Well, I will check in later and let you know my final thoughts. A little longer than a few minutes later. So it is now 10.08. So the makeup has been on around nine-ish hours, and it has pretty much held up as I expected it to. I subjected the lipstick to the burrito test. I feel like that's the ultimate test when it comes to lipsticks, and it did just all right. <laughs> but it didn't get all over my face, which I was expecting it to. I give it like a, a four, five out of 10 on the burrito test. So then I reapplied after that. This has been on consistently from maybe like 2.30. This is kind of its natural wear, which isn't too, too bad. It, it seems to fade very naturally and it doesn't, you know, like peel off like some lipsticks do. So. The mascara, as you can see, getting a little uh, sloppy. That pretty much happens with any mascara that I use because I told you I have very oily eyelids. Other than that, I don't have much to say about the mascara itself. I don't know if you can tell, but it does give me kind of spidery lashes, like very Tim Burton-y. The powder seemed to hold up. My skin is a little bit dry, but it's winter, so it pretty much is always dry. The perfume, I can't really even smell it, even directly, so. So my final thoughts are pretty much the same as they were earlier today. If I'm being completely honest, their makeup is just okay. As far as quality and performance, at least to me. So I do believe a lot of what you're paying for is the design, the aesthetics of it, maybe even just the experience and kind of like the history of it. And if you're fine with that, then that's awesome. Go buy their beautiful products because they really are beautiful. <laughs> I just always want to be honest with you guys, so here you go. Honest Rach. That's me. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope it was a little bit informative. I love you all, whether you're new or old to this channel, and I will see you in the next video. Bye! I'm really far away from the camera right now, so bye! <laughs> Now, as awesome as that they sent me a PR, tell me that's not just, whoa, no, 
It doesn't feel like it's gonna dry out my lick, my wicks. Yep. And last but not least in this, no, gotta floop it. Cause you can see through my curls. On my, oh, oh God. Well, just, no, that's not gonna work. Lipstick all over my fingers. Beans. Blink. Okay.